Praise the Lord for his goodness. I love that first song. Your love never fails. It never gives up on me. Tonight, we're going to see the importance of that scripture, putting it into our lives. What I want to talk about briefly tonight is comparisons, the deadliness of comparisons. You compare yourself with others on any level to see how you're doing. It's a common fault of humanity, and more so in this present age. We've got so many things to compare ourselves with, with others. Let's see if I can get this thing to work. The scriptures are clear that we are not wise, boy, that's an understatement, when we compare with others, ourselves with others, with our peers. Notice Galatians 6, 4. Each one, Paul writes, should test his own actions. Then he can have joy in himself without comparing himself or herself to somebody else, for each one should carry his own load. And then there's another scripture. He says in 2 Corinthians, we do not dare to classify or compare ourselves with one who can, some who, can, who command themselves. When they measure themselves by themselves and compare themselves, this is a group of peers, of people that are in the same group, compare themselves with themselves, they are not wise. Not wise, that's got to be the biggest understatement in Scripture. It's downright foolish. Because as we'll learn, Satan loves to get us in a search for self-value. And we look at others to compare ourselves. I know because I had a real problem with this. Uh, the spiritual results are deadly. Here are some of the results that happen when we compare ourselves with our peers. Feelings of inferiority when we lose the comparison. This was my problem from about age five. I was born prematurely at birth, three weeks premature, Weighed a skinny five pounds, jaundice, yellow skin. And besides that, I had two toes stuck together genetically. A sort of a freakish looking baby. <laughs> and my father said to my mother, that's the most beautiful baby I've ever seen in my life. Boy, only a father could say that of his firstborn. But my mother was comparing me in her own heart with her mother's healthy pink babies. Here I am, skinny, yellow jaundice with two toes stuck together. Oh, she thought something was terribly wrong with me. The fear rose in her heart. Well, that was my start to life. But as I grew up, I didn't grow out very much. I'm now doing it in age 73. Thank God I've lived to this time. But all through even high school, terribly underweight. I weighed 115 pounds. I was taller then than I am now. Not that much taller. And uh, could not get the muscles on my body that I so desperately wanted. Why did I want muscles? Because girls want guys with muscles. That's why. Yes, I hear the reaction. One of the spunkiest girls in high school said, and it was put in the high school newspaper, yes, boys must have muscles. And I looked at my skinny self, you know what? I was comparing myself with the football heroes. You know the guys who had so many muscles, here's the way they had to walk down the hall. Sort of like this. 
their muscles, leg muscles and arm muscles so big, sort of like apish. <laughs> yes. And I was all the time looking at them and then looking at me. Feelings of terrible unhappiness with myself and inferiority. Now listen, I was saved when I was five years old. At 10, I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit with speaking in tongues. At 16, I was called to full-time ministry and I knew God was working in my life, but he wasn't working very much in my body. <laughs> that was the problem. And my nose, sort of long and pointed, didn't help either. <laughs> so what do you do? You buy expensive. We couldn't afford it. But I bought expensive protein powder and was drinking that stuff. I bought a barbell and dumbbell set. And I was pressing uh, iron, you know, push-ups and curls and all the weights. Oh, I was determined to get muscles. And I was doing exactly the wrong sets. I was got a lot stronger, but I didn't get any bigger. I'd measure my bicep at the end of every week. That tape didn't move a fraction. <laughs> and I was so unhappy. In the end, I'll tell you what I did. In desperation, I was drinking straight whipping cream. Bah. Gain an ounce over 115 pounds? No. Because I was working so hard to get the muscles, I was burning up all that energy and in anxiety in my mind. Nobody ever showed me these scriptures that Paul said, don't compare yourselves with others. So I lived in depression, a kind of a depression and feelings of terrible inferiority. And Satan was actually speaking to me. No girl would ever love you. You're not a man. You can't help. You can't give babies to a family. You're not a man. You're just a runt. Oh, I was listening all the time to that inner voice that was speaking to me. Now, I was comparing myself physically because that's what a teenager does. But now we're no longer teens. Where is the temptation to compare? Girls, young women, do you compare your looks to another young woman? Mm. Guys, do you compare your body, your muscle set? You may have muscles dripping all over you and feel really good about yourself. But God looks on the heart. Remember that one. Man looks on outward appearance. It has been said by Christian psychologists that physical attractiveness is the gold of human worth in this modern age. Do you believe that's a true statement? Hmm? Yes or no? It is from the world's point of view, physical attractiveness. And what is the silver of human worth? Intelligence. Now, I couldn't make myself change as much as I wanted. I even in desperation sometimes prayed that God would change my body. I'm glad he didn't. I like the body that he gave me. I bet I didn't see it then as a gift from God. Now, how did I compensate? Because we cannot live with ourselves in depression. We're going to do something, find some way that we can compensate. For me, it was taking exams in high school and Bible college. Yes, that went with me even into my 20s. I'll never forget the time we had a really important test. I walked into the hundred uh, Bible school students there, and one of these football types asked me, Childers, have you studied for this exam? 
I said, of course, man. What are we here for? <laughs> he said, oh, no, you're going to wreck the curb. In those days, we were graded on the bell curve. Anybody remember that kind of grading? The higher the high marks, the more the uh, low marks would fail. More people would fail the test. You're going to wreck the curve, Childers. I said to him, oh, well, just do your best, you dumb idiot. <laughs> I didn't actually say those last two words aloud. But I felt them in my heart, and that was my attitude toward him. Wow, that's not very Christian, is it? But you see, the comparison goes on. we got to win somehow. Afterward, <laughs> what did you get on the test, Childers? Oh, you know, the usual hundred. <laughs> it was actually 90-something now that I remember. And, uh, you know, it wasn't a very hard test. What did you do, Mr. Football Hero? Oh, I didn't do very well. I went out with the girls the night before, and I only got 35%. Oh, that's too bad. Mm -hmm. Well, next time, study the night before. I didn't tell him I'd been studying for three days for that exam. Hard work, but I loved the examination because I knew I'd do well. Study the, at least the night before, you dumb ox. Again, I didn't say those words. He'd have wiped up the floor with me. But I felt them. Now, it's easy to see when I lose the comparison what my problem is. Feelings of intense worthlessness, inferiority, and Satan loves it. Why? Because there's going to be a payoff for him. We're going to compensate somehow, and it's probably not going to be very pretty. When I won the comparisons, what was my problem? Uh, I, I think I heard it. Pride, stinking, ugly pride. Satan's more happy with pride than he is with feelings of inferiority. Pride was the original sin of Satan himself. I will ascend to the throne of God. I'm going to take over. I'm the greatest in heaven. That was his attitude. We have evidence of that in Scripture. My goodness. Everybody hates pride when they see it in somebody else. It's hard to detect it in yourself. Hmm, yeah, and it was there, and I didn't know it. I just thought I was doing my best. No, I was doing my best and comparing myself with others. So pride when we win the comparison, feelings of inferiority when we lose, envy, jealousy, anger, because of the perceived unfairness of God. Why did God give me this skinny body? Mm, but it was healthy, praise God. The powers of darkness are very happy with these results. Now, we got to look at ourselves. What areas do we compare ourselves with others? Well, we've got the a looks. How about when we compare ourselves with possessions? Anybody here really wealthy? Raise your hand. I want to talk to you later. <laughs> I've got mission projects going on in the Philippines. I'd love to talk to you about, boy or girl. Mm. Yes, possessions. My new car, I'm so proud and happy about it, and I compare the new car that I've got, or the new house, or the new job, or a great bank account, inside I compare it with other people, quote, less fortunate. What that means is I'm better 
than they are. I've got something that's better. Oh, my goodness. Hmm. Special abilities. These singers were singing a wonderful song, this worship team up here. His love never fails. It never gives up on me. We'll see how important that is in a minute. When we're combating comparisons, the nasty, bad habit of comparing ourselves with others. Now, we are in a spiritual setting here. I prayed five hours last night. How many hours did you pray? Oh, I'd never say it to a person like that, but I'd think it. I won five people to the Lord on the streets last week. How many people did you win to the Lord? <laughs> See? Oh, my goodness. Uh, evangelism, prayer, knowledge of God's Word. Oh, I've had the privilege. I'm a very privileged person studying in theology, in Bible college and seminary for seven years. Yes, I have a master's, an honors master's. Yes, I have a B.A., honors in Bible. What do you have? See how insidious that is, that comparison? Instead of just accepting people as the people of God, we look when we're suffering from feelings of inferiority. We look for the edge, the advantage. Satan's very happy with that. Of course, pastors are the ones. <laughs> pastors are churches. They're spiritual. They don't do comparing, do they? I know I speak as one. I was the pastor of the Church of the Holy Spirit in Ranui, West Auckland, for five years. We pioneered, Yvonne and I, that church. And we got it going, and it's still going very well. Praise God. I hated to go to pastor's conferences. I'll tell you the truth. I gave up on them. Why? Because the first thing that was out of the mouth of other pastors, my colleagues, my born again and called of God to bring the light of the gospel to the world, First question they'd ask me, John, it's great to see you. How many people are you running now in your church? And my 60 could not compare with their 160. Why would a pastor ever think that way? The comparison is for personal value, but it's insidious. It's on Satan's territory. Yeah. Pastors have problems with this unless they're aware. If they can't just be happy with what God is doing and let it rest at that, why compare? It tells me there's a lack inside because I know I had a lack inside, a deep one. All right. So, why do we compare a perceived lack of personal value and security? We compare because we're looking to compensate for our failures. And we're listening to the wrong translator that's telling us into our mind, like I heard him many times say, you're no good, John. You're no good. You're never going to make it. No woman is ever going to want you. I was listening to that translator who was the enemy of my soul. So, how many of you can relate to what I'm saying personally? Do you have problems with comparison? I won't ask you to raise your hand, but just give me a nod. Oh, I think I see a lot of nods. I even see a brave hand going up. This is human. We don't realize how dangerous it is. It puts us on the enemy's territory. Oh, yes. Now, I can tell you how you can tell if you're comparing with others. In Romans chapter 12, thank you, verse 15, I remembered the verse, but I couldn't remember the chapter tonight. It says, 
Romans 12, 15. Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. What was happening in my life and will happen in yours, just the opposite. When others have great successes, this is in your peer group, the same DTS, the same church, same family, whatever. When they have great success and you're not doing so hot, then you'll not really rejoice with them in your heart. You'll weep. And when others fail in your peer group, you'll feel strangely warmed inside. This is what was happening to me. In my hall at Bible College, there was a New Zealand young man who was on fire for God and God has used greatly. I count him as one of my personal friends today and I think he does the same. His wife was friends with my wife. They're both New Zealanders and she would write letters to my wife and say all the wonderful things that her husband was doing. We've been invited to a youth conference, youth leaders conference. People are coming from all over the United States and my husband is going to speak to them. Whenever I would read her letters, I would be depressed for three days. This is not rejoicing with those who rejoice. This is weeping. And sometimes when I'd come across one of my fellow Bible school students and he was having a, a problem or his wife was having a problem or their marriage was having a problem, I wouldn't weep, not really, with him. Like I said, I would feel strangely warmed. At least I'm not that bad. Oh, what's wrong? Why do we fall into Satan's trap like this? I'll tell you why. Because there's a love lack inside. His love never fails. It never gives up on me. But when I look at my own life, I forget about all that spiritual stuff. Oh, my goodness. What's the reality we're dealing with? I've got a lack of love from God. He's loving me, but I'm not receiving it. That would just wipe out the need for comparisons. I hope you're getting this because it's a great key for my life. It enables me to focus on what God is telling me to do. When I sense that I'm lacking in God's love and start the bad, nasty habit of comparisons again, I know I've got to fill myself with God's love by faith. So I walk around and I do this. I'm reaching up to God. I'm grabbing hold of His love for me and I'm pulling it down in right here. It's like I'm doing an exercise. Yes, it is an exercise. It's a spiritual exercise. I put the love of God, and I keep on doing it. I keep reaching up for His love until I really am full of His love. And when I'm full of His love, there's no fear. Perfect love drives out fear. We know that from 1 John 4:18. But do we practice it? That's the important thing. Don't allow the enemy to speak to you like he did to me for many, many years until I was convinced it was true. You're no good, John. You're no good. Because <laughs> there was a woman who loved me, a New Zealander who came, who was so attractive to me, spiritual, physically lovely, a real good-hearted person. And when we married, I found out how evil the lies and wrong the lies were of Satan. He said, you'll never be able to father children. Oh, 
we had four boys in four and a half years. We couldn't stop. That was the problem. We were trying for more girls. And we have five. Okay. Now, here's what I've learned. The sign that I'm comparing is I don't really rejoice with those who rejoice or weep with those who re weep. I need the love of God. You can do it not by feelings. Don't fall into that romantic feeling trap of Hollywood that love is feelings. Sometimes they're there, sometimes they're not. But God is always faithful and will always love. He never gives up. He always is giving us enormous love. But do we have the faith? Do we exercise the faith to receive it? That's where the rubber meets the road, so to speak. And I've learned by faith I can receive God's immense love for me. Then I don't need to compare. Let's pray. Lord, we're simply people in this fallen world, and we want to bring the light of Jesus Christ to people that need it for eternity. Not just this world. Not just helping out poor people occasionally or preaching an occasional sermon. Or We are doing this because it's going to last for eternity. People are hanging in the balance for eternity. And we need to be people filled with your love. Help us, Lord, to use our faith, not just to receive healing or be used of God in mighty spiritual ways, but inside our lives to be filled up with your love for us. And therefore, rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Father God, for every person here tonight, help them to really search their heart now And be honest before you, Lord, to do your perfect will. Help us, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, response time. How many of you know? Now I'm going to ask a really difficult question, but it's an important one. How many of you know you have a problem with comparing? Hands up. Yes, put them up. That's right. Oh, I love honest people because God can use honest people. People that have got to hide and, you know, not be honest. Uh, it's hard for God to use us. Oh, I tell you, I was into this stuff big time. I changed when I realized I was allowing Satan to defeat me. So from that time on, by faith, I began to receive the love of God. So incredible is his compassion for me. I listen to people like Howard Storm. I really listen to those people again and again and again. I read their books, the ones who love God and know that God loves them despite all of their terrible mistakes. They know God loves them. I like to be with those kinds of people, so a little bit of that will rub up on me. I want that, because I know I need that. Listen, make a decision tonight. I mean, today is the day of salvation. You've already received the Lord Jesus, so had I. Some of you have already been baptized in the Holy Spirit. So was I. Some of you are called to minister or you wouldn't be here. You've got a great calling in missions. There's something beating in your heart that's marvelous. And mine too. I'm so glad that I'm involved in mission. It gives me immense satisfaction and joy. But inside... How are you relating to yourself? 
determine from this night you're going to give up the bad habit of comparing with others. Let them be. Your job is to receive by faith, not feelings. By faith, receive what God is constantly pouring out like a mighty river, like a mighty waterfall, huge waterfall of love for you. Stand under that waterfall by faith and just open up your life to receive His love. His love is there for you. That's why He sent Jesus. God bless you tonight.